Hey Jo. Hello love. Uh, how are you? I am amazing. Fantastic. So last week, before you had your school holidays, we covered the digestive system up to the stomach. Yes. Do you want to quickly run through what you remember? Mm. And then we can move on. Okay, quickly. Yes. Okay, so the mouth is a cavity where all of um so when you eat when you eat your food, mm -hmm. it starts in the mouth mm -hmm. and then you use your teeth mm -hmm. to chew to chew the food. Mm -hmm. Each of the teeth each each tooth has a different function. Okay, I know you remember the function, so you don't, you don't need to go through them individually. Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, so some of them, some of them cook the food. Mm -hmm. Some of them, some of them grind the food, and some and some of them just rip the food apart. Uh huh. And what is that called? Do you remember? Mm? What what kind of digest digestion is that? The function. Yes, but it's the mechanical. The mechanic. Okay, I was going to say, is it mechanical or is it the chemical? The mechanical. Okay, yep. Yeah. Then, then the tongue, then the tongue does, um, kind of, just crushes the food mm -hmm. to the youth of the mouth. Yes. And it rolls the food into a bolus. Mm -hmm. And... And the saliva from the from the salivary glands mm -hmm. um, um, is a liquid. Mm -hmm. So then that means it has water, mm -hmm. and it, but it also has two salivary enzymes. Yes. Lipase. Mm -hmm. Well and done. I always forget one of them. I know. Sometimes you, you remember the other and you don't remember life haze, but today you remember this one. Shall I tell you? It starts with an A. But the good, yes, fantastic. I was just about to say the good thing is that you remember that they are called salivary enzymes, which is the most important bit. Yes? And that's the, the chemical mm -hmm. thing. Brilliant. That's, yeah. the, that's the chemical, not the mechanical, because... Yes. Oh, because you're using the enzymes. Absolutely. Those are, those are chemicals. Brilliant, yes. So then, then it's, so then once the food is rolled into a bolus, it goes down the esophagus. Mm -hmm. So it contracts, relax, contract, yeah. relax, contract, relax. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Did you try and play it um, on your... Um, I almost say trumpet on your cornet. Mm. I, I, I couldn't find the right notes for it. Okay, yeah, then let's go. Contract, relax. Then, oh yeah, and the, and the, the epiglottis closes to make sure the food doesn't go the wrong way. Yes. Or if you're drinking water, so the water, so the liquid doesn't go the wrong way. Yes. And um, so then the food will go down to the stomach. Mhm. Mm so the so the stomach will start. So the stomach will expand. Mhm. Mm based on the amount of food you have, mm -hmm. you eat. So if it was a snack, yeah, it would. It would, probably, it would probably just stay the same, or it could just grow a little bit. Yeah. If it was an, if it was an, if it was a full meal, mm -hmm. then it would yeah. actually proper expand. Yes. So then the stomach will churn the food. Mm -hmm. And then, the, and then the stomach acid will turn on some enzyme, more enzymes. Yes. That will help break down the food uh -huh. and also get rid of any bacteria. Yes. That was the chemical one, I think. Yes, that is the chemical one. The churning is more mechanical. I can Yeah. Like churning butter. Yes. That's that one I can all I always come up with. Yes. I know. Yes. You keep yeah, you do 
come up with that chatting butter actually. Yes, then uh, so next so that is where we left off. Yes, and you remember that um the mouth is called the oral cavity. Yes, the, there's the oral cavity, the thoracic cavity, but can, the abdominal cavity. Okay, could, could we just correct, uh, well, actually clarify that the thoracic cavity belongs to the, respirat the respiratory system that is for breathing and the lungs. However, there is one organ of the digestive system that passes through the thoracic cavity, which is the esophagus. Fantastic, yeah. I just wanted you to, 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 you know, to be clear that the oral cavity and the abdominal cavity are the two cavities that belong to the digestive system and the thoracic cavity belongs to the respiratory system. However, the digestive system passes through the thoracic cavity Actually, have you also realized that the digestive system is actually one long tube that starts at the mouth and ends at the anus? Oh yeah, it is kind of like a tube. Yeah, and it, it doesn't stop, which is why I suppose it has to pass through other cavities to get to the end. Yes. Yeah. Because, yes, Joe. I just realized I forgot my pen. Did you? Yes. Uh, okay, do you want to quickly grab? Yes. Okay, I'll start drawing while you are grabbing. I'm back. Oh, fantastic. So, okay, so we ended here, which is the end bit of the stomach, literally. Yes. And you remember there was a sphincter here? Uh, yes, there was the, yes, there was a sphincter. Yeah. So now we're going into this small intestine and the small inter okay let me first of all quickly draw I don't know whether to quickly draw or to be talking We're so close to the end of the digestive system digestive system I know and very soon you'll be You'll be going to the, did you, did you say respiratory or did you say circulatory? I think I said circulatory, so circulatory system. Okay. Yeah, very soon you'll be moving on. Oh, I'll miss it. I know. But this, but you know this one so well, so. Yeah, so that would explain why we're already, why we're already nearly at the end. Yeah. If I but, didn't but, know it so well, then we probably wouldn't be at the end. But but remember, we actually started in March, then we moved on to physics in, over April and May, I think. Or did we go to, actually it was end of March we started, or no, well, we started in March, then yeah, we moved we on to physics and we returned at the end of May and now it's June. So No, it was we we did we didn't return on the end of May. I think it was more like the middle. Did we? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, now it's June. So yeah, we have spent um quite some time on it. Um okay, so today Joe, I just want us to have a very quick lesson actually, just to show where things are. This, by the way, is actually the stomach, the end bit of the stomach. I'm going to make it slightly bigger, so that it's a bit different. Yeah. So this is the stomach, as you remember. So today, I, I just want us um, to look at how things are in the abdominal cavity obviously just the structure of things so that w then we can uh, focus more on function afterwards okay okay brilliant so we now we have the stomach and you remember before when you were telling me when you were telling me about the entire digestive system you said when digestion occurs there are two friends of the digestive system that help which are the um, the pancreas. Yes. 
and the liver Brilliant. between the pancreas. Yes. So the pancreas actually just leaves here behind the stomach. So I'm now going to remove this word because you know it's the stomach, right? Yes. Yeah. So the pancreas leaves more behind the stomach. I'll also explain another thing which I've done. Just that I just wanted to add the pancreas quickly. And it actually looks like a leaf. So even when you draw it, you can actually do that because it has a lot of ducts. Doesn't that look like a beautiful, well, like a leaf? Yeah, that looks like a, like a really nice leaf. Yeah. And then the liver leaves sort of there. The liver is massive. Did you know that? I was thinking the liver was massive. Yeah, it's actually the largest organ in the body, apart from the skin, of course. Wait, the skin is an organ? Yes. Wow. So the liver is more on the right hand side. Yeah, that is big. And it's quite big. So the reason why I've drawn the liver and the pancreas here is just to quickly explain that actually when you look at the human body, um, I wonder whether I have any diagrams that I can quickly show you. Things sit more like this. I do have that chart actually, but in terms of that will be the liver, mm. that is the stomach. That behind the stomach is the pancreas there. Can you see that? I know. It, just, it looks kind of like a claw. Yeah. Like an animal. Absolutely, yeah. But then look, it's actually inside, it's sort of like enclosed a bit by the small intestine. Do you see that? Sort of, it's, it's more like, if, if, you look at, if you look at that diagram, it's more like this. Like this is the small intestine here. And then the pancreas is inside here. Does that make sense? Yes. And then the stomach is on top. Like this. So you have three things that overlay each other. Does that make sense? So if, if, say, you're looking at the human body and you wanted to see the pancreas, you actually have to lift the stomach up and then you'd see the pancreas behind the stomach oh. but sort of lying inside the sea here. But I just, mo I just moved it up there slightly so that we can draw the ducts and everything. But actually, in real life, it would be more like this. With the stomach lying on top of it. It's always covered by the stomach, so you would hardly ever see it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's lying inside the sea. So if we remove the stomach down here, well, like this. The only reason why I'm mentioning it is because you already know that the pancreas is important for digestion and the liver is important for digestion, but they are not exactly part of the digestive system. So we have to show how they connect to the digestive system in order to help with digestion. Yes, that's why I said they're like friends. Friends, absolutely. Good friends, they're really good friends. They are they're incredibly, they're incredibly good friends. And then the liver is up there. So in the human body, the liver is more like up here. And then it has, have you ever heard something called a gallbladder? I've heard you say it. Oh yeah, it looks like a little... But money bag that's just hanging underneath the liver there and that mm. gallbladder brings something called bile acid to the stomach which helps to break down fats oh yeah 
and then as you can see there this this has a duct the pancreas also has a duct and these two ducts come together to join there in the small intestine does that make sense yes yeah there is a lot of indigestion yeah but then th that's all i wanted you to 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 know how these two join to the digestive system to bring you know essential components for digestion but then now we can move on then we have as we have already said the small intestine do you know the parts of the small intestine of course there are all parts of the small intestine there's parts of the stomach so there's got to be parts of the small intestine <laughs> oh yeah you remember the parts of that was in my own parts of the stomach okay parts of the small intestine are now this leaky part here that has the pancreas is called um a duodenum you don't need to remember do you don't need to re remember the words remember we just tell you the words so that when you hear them in the future you remember them do you remember yes duodenum yeah and then that's after, actually simple oh, one of the other ones really duodenum ah. yeah and then we have what we call the jejunum Jejunum. Yeah. Really? Yep. I thought it was going to be um, as... Like, I thought the, it was going to be as... Um, the words were going to be as hard as the ones in the stomach. But uh, these are simpler. These are simpler, yeah. And then the last bit, which is the longest bit, is called the allium. Ali really? Oh, ilium, yeah. Yeah. This is simple. This is very very simple for you, I know. So yeah, those are the only three words that you need to remember for this small intestine that it has these uh these bits. And the reason why it has these bits is because as you can see the liver and pancreas bring in the digestive juices you know, from the pancreas and the bile from the liver to the duodenum. Duodenum. Yeah. And then the duodenum continues with the digestive process. And the ileum as well is the, continues obviously with the digestive process. And it's the longest as well, longest bit of the um, small intestine. Just so you know, I'm just writing down this. Okay, no. And um, the, the other reason why I decided that today we'll just look at how things look is because di the actual digestion and absorption of food occurs here. So... It might be easier for us to sort of just look at what how things look like and where everything is so that when we are putting it all together and saying actually then the pancreas brings in pancreatic enzymes which come in through the duodenum continue breaking down food food getting absorbed in the ileum it makes sense doesn't it Yes. Yeah. Okay, then from from here. So remember this is quite the longest bit, right? So it it looks like, you know, like if you if say if you had um string and you dropped and you held it up and just dropped it, so it looks a little bit messy. While it's all the other. So it looks a little bit not like tangled together though, but there's a lot of it compressed to one part of the body yes yeah so yeah whereas this one is quite straight as you, well obviously it's the c shaped but not a lot of, there isn't um any other of it sort of lying on top of it 
Yeah. And then, yes, Joe. <clears throat> Do you remember what I said yesterday about the small intestine? Well, not yesterday, but oh, no, yeah, la, yeah, la, that is um seven meters long. Yeah, that is seven meters long. So then, so then, so then it would have to, fi so then it would have to fit. So then it would, so that would explain why it would have to be so compressed. Absolutely. Because if it was seven feet. meters long, it would, it, it, you would have, it would have to be so. It would, be, it would it would be so I know yeah L look at that and remember that's the thoracic cavity so the abdominal cavities from here to there so all of that that seven meters has to fit in there yeah so that would explain why it would fight so yeah I'm really glad that you actually we are putting things together yourself as well. So then, um, well, obviously we haven't drawn all seven meters because we wouldn't have space. <laughs> and as well, if you can remember, we've uh, elongated things as well, just to show where things are in terms of the stomach, the pancreas, and the duodenum. And then after the, the ileum, which is the last bit, we then move on to the large intestine. Uh, let's add a little bit more of this small intestine. So in a way the small intestine actually lies in the middle. And then at the end, ooh, well done. Oh, so you're continuing from the old diagram. That's really good. Yes, because I literally still have space. I even, I still have space for the rectum and everything. I know, well done. So then we, the large intestine starts here, more like there, right at the bottom of the right hand corner. And we have something you've probably had, you may have heard of it, called the appendix at the beginning. Have you heard of that? People saying, oh, my appendix is sore. Oh, I've heard it. I've heard it about an appendix before. Yeah. So it sits, it's just the tail bit of, this, of the large um, intestine at the beginning. Um, it doesn't really have much of a function other than mm -hmm. it's just there. So then the large intestine of us starts being, you know, is large. Yes, it is very large. Yeah. And in the normal, it, well, in the human body, it actually covers the small intestine. So it sort of comes up here. Like a letter N, a small letter N. I would say that's a giant letter N. Uh, no, in terms of not the capital. Oh. Yeah. So does that make sense? So it comes up there. So you would have the stomach like that, remember? And then the small intestine is hidden under. And then the large intestine comes up like that and then just under the stomach there so stomach large intestine does that make sense yes yeah so that's how it looks like in the in the actually looks like in the human body but for our purposes because we don't want to be covering things since we're going to use this diagram for function we are going to remove these bits and just pull the large intestine down a bit. So we'll just, um, I should not have used this black, it's hard to get. Ooh, that's a 
us. <laughs> would, you, would you just quickly... Yes, Joe. <clears throat> I have another random fact. Okay. Yeah, go on. Oh, we actually, we actually, we, we, we actually share some of our DNA with a banana. Do we? I did not know yeah. that. But I will look it up. Shall we quickly draw this since our time is almost up? Yes. I will look up that. Actually, I did not know about you. How did you find that out? Joe never reveals the Joe, these sources. Joe never reveals the sources of this random fact. I respect that. <laughs> Okay. It's like a magician never reveals a secret. The secrets, I don't reveal yeah. my sources. Okay. So then we go. Look, Joe. We then um you remember that is our large intestine. We've pulled it down a bit so that we can have uh, enough space because we don't really want everything to be a bit messy up there. Yeah, I just decided to do it like that. Let's see. I can't see. Do like that. I just decided to do like do it like that. Okay. So where is the oh okay. Yeah, that's still fine as well. The only reason why I've actually literally drawn it like this is because the names of the large intestine. You know the large intestine is also called a colon, right? Yes. Oh that oh. Oh god, what did you want to say? You might perhaps you already know. Uh, no, it's because you reminded me of something. What did I remind you of? Um, I'll tell you in a minute what what it comes back to you. Shall I? Shall I? Um, so the names of the large intestine are. This bit here, starting right here at the bottom, remember at the right hand corner bottom, coming up towards the liver, is called the ascending colon. That's the name. Yeah? Of course it's ascending. Of course it is ascending, as you can see, which is why I drew it like this. Because then it makes, you know, it makes the names quite easy to understand. And then this, this bit here, which is going across from the right hand side to the left hand side is called a transverse colon. Okay. Is the one that's going down the descending? Yes, well done. <laughs> oh, what did I write? And as you rightly say, this one is the descending column. It's because that one said ascending, so... Yeah. Ascending. I think these names are the easiest. What do you think? It just makes your life so easy. True. Yeah. Because you just go, oh, you know. And then ascending, from... Ascending, transverse, descending. Yeah. And then from here, we then, have, you know, we're getting to the last stages, really, of our digestive system. everything <laughs> and then we have um something called a sigmoid colon And then leading to the rectum and the anus. Wow. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I didn't tell you. So 
So, and as you can see, the rectum sort of leads the anus to the middle part. And as you would know, the anal cavity is right within the central part of the human body, isn't it? Yes, and yeah. now we have another cavity. And we have another cavity, indeed. The cavity where everything comes out. Yeah. So isn't it fantastic that you can actually see that bowl of pasta that you ate going into your oral cavity, passing through the thoracic cavity because of the oesophagus, going into your abdominal cavity, getting digested, broken down, food absorbed, and then going obviously through the abdominal cavity and then finally coming into the anal cavity and being excreted as Be yes it's feces feces yeah feces, yes <laughs> yep mm -hmm. so how do you feel about this now that you have an idea of what things look like yes jo oh okay did you have any questions no okay so next time when we come in we'll remove the words and we're going to function yeah yeah we'll start by looking at the end bit of the stomach where our chyme has been formed remember which is a liquid food yes. which is liquid food that has a consistency that looks like porridge literally yes yeah so we'll look at that and we'll look at it coming here mixing with Secretions from the friends, the liver, and the pancreas. Mm -hmm. And then we'll look at what then happens there. We'll look at the whole process. This process here, moving through the small intestine, actually takes um, hours. So if you remember chewing about a minute, also focus seconds, this hours, this possibly hours to days. Because sometimes, remember, you don't have a poo, do you? Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes this can just be sitting there for days while at least you're still absorbing fluid. Which is why sometimes if you haven't had a poo for a long time, when you go to have a poo, your poo is a bit hard. Doesn't that happen? Yes, Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come see, come see, yeah. So it's because if, if, you know, if the poo is sitting here, water keeps being absorbed out. Yeah. But then that, so then if it's been there for a long time, then it wouldn't have any, it wouldn't have as much liquid as it would have if, as it would have if you, yeah. if it, if it only took a few yeah if it's yeah if it's a few hours then yeah it will still be soft and easy to pass but if it sits there for a few days then it becomes a little bit harder for you to come out because it has lost so much liquid during this phase when it's in the colon okay so prepare yourself for a much more intense lesson when we're looking at how food gets broken down Okay. Yeah. And also here, by the way, there is bacteria, your resident microbes, which you like, and you're always talking about some people's microbes. They live in here, in the large intestine. Yes. And, and, just, and just a reminder, we are actually more microbes than humans. Okay, yeah, you did say that the other day. So yeah, we'll leave it here today. How was today?